Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this gorgeous Love is Everywhere cowl. This is a lovely piece. Now, I've made mine in some Valentine colors of white, pink, and red, but you can, of course, make this in any colors you like. The idea was be, uh, behind it was we're going to make this um, in the round in a cluster V stitch, and they look like sweet little hearts all in a row. And the... the um, changes of color really show that off. So I thought this would be a really fun project. And I crocheted this in one evening. It's a really fast project. We're gonna use some super bulky yarn and a large hook. Now the finished piece measures about 11 inches tall and has a 38 inch circumference. So it has a nice kind of bulky, generous feel, which is perfect for the cold months. And it has some lovely colors. So this pattern can be found um, for free on the blog, the written pattern and also as an ad-free PDF in my shop. Now, both of those links are found below, and also we're gonna do the full video tutorial today from start to finish. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle. We're gonna be using a nine millimeter N crochet hook. This is my wood streamline from Furls. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. We're also going to be using 243 yards of some super bulky yarn. Now I'm gonna be using Lion Brand's hometown yarn. I have three balls of this. So each ball is 81 yards. And this, uh, because I'm using three balls, it makes a total of 243 yards. Now I chose Valentine colors. You can use any colors that you like. But if you wanted to replicate my colors, I have one ball of Tampa Spice, one ball of uh, Providence pink and one ball of New York white. So three balls of this. I used one of each color. I'm going to make mine uh, like a striped sequence. Um, but again, you can use any colors you like. So 243 yards of super bulky yarn with our nine millimeter and crochet hook. If you need to substitute yarn, just look on your yarn label for that little yarn ball picture. This is a super bulky six and it recommends the nine millimeter end crochet hook and you'll be just fine with whatever you pick uh, following those guidelines as well. So let's get started. So we have our yarn and our hook and we're ready to go. Now I like to kind of, whenever I'm doing projects with multicolors, I like to lay them out in the order. So we're going to start with the red and then I'll do pink and then white. So I'm going to scoot these out of the way for now. And we're just going to have our red yarn here. So we're going to make our cowl in the round and our chain is going to be 63 chains and if you need to change that will establish the circumference so if you need to stop uh, change the circumference um, you'll just work in a multiple of three so all that means in case you're not familiar with that is that when you're doing your starting chain you're going to go three plus three plus three plus three and so forth until you get the circumference that you need to stay in line with our stitch sequence and then um, you'll you know, any circumference you want to do will be okay as long as it's a multiple of three. But we're going to do 63 chains. So what you want to do is put a slip knot on your hook to begin. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see what we're doing here a little bit better. So what we're going to do is have a little tail, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. So again, 63 chains. So we're going to to make a chain, you want to wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, and sixty-three. So here is our starting chain. And what I did was I sort of like held it up just to make sure that I liked the length and um, that I didn't want to change anything. But again, a multiple of three if you need to adjust. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to join our chain to create like a tube and we're going to work upward. So what you'll want to do is work a slip stitch in that farthest chain from the hook. But you want to be careful not to twist because you don't want to twist your chain um, and then you know that'll create a twist in your work in your whole entire tube that we'll be creating. So what I do to make it really easy is the front of your chain should make like V's and the back of it sort of looks like a chain link fence. So what you'll want to do is the front of your chain where it looks like V's, you kind of want to just run your thumb down it. So if you do that, see I just had a little twist there, so I untwisted it, 
And you just want to run your thumb all the way down, making sure nothing's twisted. And it does get twisted, especially a longer chain like this. And you'll want to just go all the way down to the end with your thumb to that first chain that you made, which is right here. And I made sure everything was nice and untwisted. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that farthest chain from the hook. And then grab my yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through that loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay. And now we're ready to begin round one. So we're going to work round one together and then we're going to move on to round two. Round two is the round that you'll complete um, work on for the rest of your cow. It's pretty easy to, you know, sequence to remember. So what we're going to do, we're sort of just going to get this tail out of the way. We'll deal with that later. And then what we want to do is chain three. So one, two, three. So to begin, what we're going to do is skip two chains and in the chain after that, we're going to work our first cluster V stitch. So to do that, what you're going to do is wrap the yarn around the hook and then we're going to insert the hook into that chain and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Then what we're going to do is wrap the yarn around the hook again, bring it through the first two loops on the hook. You'll have two loops on your hook now. Then you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook and go back into that same chain and bring up a loop. You'll have four loops on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring through the first two loops, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the last three loops. All three, there's last three loops on your hook. Okay, so that's the first half of our cluster V. So then what we want to do is chain two, one and two. And then what we're going to do is work the other part by doing the same thing that we did on this side. Okay, so once again, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that chain and bring up a loop. Three loops are on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two chains, or loops rather, excuse me, you'll have two loops on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, go back into that same chain, bring up a loop, you'll have four loops on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring through the first two loops, three loops are on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops. So here is our cluster V, the first one of the row, okay? Let's work another one together. We'll work a few together and then we'll kind of continue around on our own. So what you'll want to do next is skip the next two chains and in the chain after that, we'll do the same thing. Wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the chain and bring up a loop. Three loops are on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook again, bring through the first two loops, two loops are on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, go back into that same chain and bring up a loop. You'll have four loops on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring through the first two loops, wrap the yarn around the hook again, bring it through all three of those last loops. And then we're going to chain two to create that V that will kind of push that open. All right. In the same chain, let's do the other half of our cluster V wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that chain, that same chain, three loops are on the hook, yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, two loops are on the hook, wrap the yarn around the hook, reinsert it back into that same chain and bring up a loop, Four loops are on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring through the first two loops. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops. Our second cluster V is complete. And see how it, it kind of looks like a regular V stitch, but it's much more like plushy looking, okay? Now we're gonna skip two chains and in the chain after that, let's work another one. We'll go a little faster this time. Yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, go back into that same chain and bring up a loop. Four loops are on the hook. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through those last three loops. Now we're going to chain two. One and two. And then in that same chain, we're going to do the same thing. Yarn around hook, insert it into that same chain, bring up a loop. Yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, go back into that same chain and bring up a loop. Four loops are on the hook. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, bring through the last three loops. Now we have three little cluster V's. Very nice looking. Looks like little hearts in a row. All right, let's do one more together. Uh, we're just repeating what we've done. We're just going to work one more just to kind of like practice a little and then we can kind of continue around. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that, yarn around hook, insert it into that chain and bring up a loop. 
yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, go back into that same chain and bring up a loop, four loops are on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops on the hook. Chain two. All right, still working in that same chain. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, go back into that same chain, bring up a loop, four loops are on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through those last three loops, okay? So we have a couple of our cluster V's going now, and we're gonna continue around working those cluster V's all the way around, and then when we rejoin, we'll be almost to the end of this round, and I'm gonna show you kinda of how to wrap it up and then we'll move on to round two, okay? So just keep going with your cluster Vs. If you need to back up the video or uh, enable the slow motion feature, you can do that as well. All right, coming up to the end of our round here, we just have one more cluster V to make. So let's make it together. We're gonna skip two chains and in the chain after that, that last chain, because you can see this chain, um, remember that chain three at the beginning of the round? that would be this here. So we're at the end, so skip two chains and in that last chain, work your last cluster B, okay? So we're just gonna go through this real quick because we've already done this several times together and you're just gonna work that very last cluster V in that last chain of your round. And then what we're gonna do, this is the second part, so I'm just gonna work on that just like that, okay? So then what we're gonna do is go back to that chain three from the beginning of the round here, and we're gonna count three chains up. One, two, three, and then we're gonna insert our hook into that third chain up and join with a slip stitch to close the round. So insert your hook into that chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring up a loop. Bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And now we've closed the round and it looks great. Okay. So now we're ready to move on to round two. And let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, we have a nice circumference for our cow. It's very comfy and kind of slouchy. So what we wanna do is for round two, um, at this point you'll kind of have to decide how you want your stripes to be. Do you want just a solid color? Then just stick to your color, keep going. If you wanna change colors, I'm gonna do one round per color, or one color per round, rather, and um, that will yield some ends that we'll have to weave in later, but I'm okay with that, because I really wanna show off these cluster Vs. They look like little hearts, and when you um, do contrasting yarn, you really can show those stitches off really pretty. So what I'm gonna do, now you could do a couple rows before or rounds before switching, it's totally up to you, but I'm gonna do one color per round. So I'm gonna cut the yarn, leaving a little tail so I can weave that in later. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop, and we're just fastening off, okay? Um, if there's a way that you prefer joining a new ball of yarn without cutting the yarn, um, there are other ways to do it. Um, so feel free to do that if you prefer a different way. Now I'm gonna scoop my red over, and my next color is gonna be the pink, okay? So let's zoom back in once again. And where we left off, you can see here where we fastened off, you're gonna go right back into that seam stitch, grab your new yarn and just hook it right on and bring it through and then just tie it right on. Again, if you have a preferred way of joining a new ball of yarn, definitely do that. Feel free to do that, okay? So I'm gonna get these tails kind of out of the way so we can see our work better and we'll weave these in at the end. So for round two, what we're gonna do, now that we've joined our new yarn, we're gonna insert the hook back in, bring up a loop, and now we're ready to roll with a new color, okay? So then what we wanna do for round two, let me get everything out of the way here so you can really see what I'm doing, is we're once again, we're gonna chain three, same as the last round. One, two, three. And now we're gonna work our cluster V's in the chain two spaces. So do you remember when we did our cluster V's in between each side, we did a chain two, that created a space. So if you go, go on the blog for the written pattern um, or the pattern in my shop, either one, um, we call it the chain two space because it was created by making that chain two. So for the rest of our cow, we're not gonna be counting uh, chains and skipping chains and things. We're gonna just be working into those chain two spaces. So a little bit easier actually. 
So what we're gonna do is work our first cluster V into the chain two space, okay? So once again, wrap the yarn around the hook just to refresh, bring up a loop. Three loops are on the hook, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, go back into that chain two space and bring up a loop. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through those last three loops. Then we're gonna chain two. And then in that same chain two space, you can push things over if you need to make yourself some more room. We're gonna work the other half of our cluster B, okay? So just go through and do that. This is the same thing we've been doing, so nothing new here. And then our cluster B is complete. So see how they sort of stack on top of one another? And then we'll add the white one on the next round and it'll sort of be like this lovely Valentine ombre look, okay? So let's do one more together. So hop over to the next cluster V that you see, which is right here. Locate that chain two space and work your next cluster V right in that chain two space. And that's all you have to do all the way around and really for the rest of your cowl. And make sure you do your chain two so you give yourself space to work the next round. And then just do the same thing on the other side. Just like that, okay? So let's work around this round as well. And then when we rejoin, we're gonna be almost to the end of this round. I'll show you how to finish it up. So keep working cluster Vs in those chain two spaces of every cluster V all the way around. And then we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, we're just coming up to that last cluster V of round two. We're just gonna work it the same way we've been working all of our cluster V stitches. Just to, just to finish up the round here. And then we're gonna do what we did before and join in that third chain up. So remember that chain three at the beginning of the round? Count one, two, three, and then insert your hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, okay? Now I wanna show you something really neat about this cow. Now I'm gonna to switch to white next and keep repeating round two. So I'm just gonna cut the yarn. And let me just um, remember how we joined our new yarn. I'm gonna grab the new color. And I wanna show you something really neat though when, as soon as I join this yarn, I'll show you. So insert your hook in that last stitch worked. Grab your new color, which is white in our case or whatever color you've chosen for your sequence here. And once again, we're just gonna tie it right on, get our little tails out of the way. We'll take care of all these tails later. Insert your hook back into that stitch, bring up a loop and you're ready to go. Now, our cluster Vs look like little hearts in a row, but I wanted to show you something really neat. This row here, when you flip it over, they look like puffy 3D hearts. Aren't they pretty? So you could actually wear this cowl upside down too. Um, this is actually, uh, when you flip them over, they look like this, but they look like really puffy little 3D hearts. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. I thought that was a really neat um, thing. You could wear it either way and they'll look like little hearts. So um, what you'll wanna do to finish your project is to just switch colors as, as often as you prefer. I'm doing each round a different color. And I realize that will give us lots of ends, but I'm definitely willing to make that sacrifice to get this beautiful ombre effect that we're getting and to really show off the stitches with our contrasting yarn. So you're just gonna keep working round two over and over and over again until your cowl is as tall as you would like it to be. So now we're working for height. We have our circumference established. Um, but you're just gonna be repeating round two over and over and over, switching colors as often as you want until your cowl is as tall as you would like it to be. So I'm gonna keep working my rounds and when we rejoin, um, I'll show you how much height we have. We can see more of the um, our colors all laid out. So keep going with round two. If you need to back up the video or watch it in slow motion, feel free to do that as well. So we'll um, keep working our round two all the way up and rejoin in just a minute. Okay, just working that last cluster of our round here and we are wrapping this up, okay? So here is our last cluster V and then we're just gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round. Same thing we've been doing. 
Now I got, out of the three balls of yarn, I was able to get some good color display here. So I'm just going to, there we go, it was a little snug. Um, we're going to cut our yarn and fasten off here, wrap the yarn around the hook and just pull it through, okay? So I just wanted to show you how beautifully these colors played out. We got good representation of the red and the pink and the white. And um, I had, I mean, just enough, like the tiniest amount to do one more round of the red. Um, I could have ended on the white, so each one had three. Um, you know, each color had, you know, three rounds of each. But I had just enough to put like one more, barely one more round around the top just to kind of like, it sort of frames it in. See how like the red just sort of frames it in. And I thought that looked nicer. So the next thing we want to do for our cowl is we need to weave in the ends. Now, if you did one round um, and then change colors like I did, you're going to have lots of ends to weave in and that's okay. Um, let me just turn this inside out. You can see. Uh, all the ends here. It almost looks like fringe. So what you want to do um, to finish up is just to weave in the ends. Now I wanted to just show you, um, we'll do one at a time, but um, I'll show you how to do one. Now with this red here, you want to make sure when you're weaving in your ends and you have lots of colors like this, that you stay in the same color. So you won't see this other color traveling through another section, okay? So what you have here is the red, and we're just gonna stay in the red area. And this is the inside of our cow, so you wanna just not go to the other side, just keep it on the insides of these loops as you weave. And we will go in one direction, come back in the other direction, just like that. And then I like to just come back in the other direction because it sort of locks that tail into place. And then you'll just snip your end just like that. And then you'll just repeat for the rest of your end. So I'm going to go ahead and weave my ends. And then when we return, we'll look at our finished piece. All right, so all of our ends are woven in. Let's turn this right side out. And look at our beautiful handiwork. So here is our lovely cowl and it's all finished and it's ready to wear. And I will say I crocheted this in one evening. So it's a really fast one to crochet. And I hope you enjoyed this project. And so that is how you crochet the Love is Everywhere cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.